Hello, everybody. Another midweek chat. I, I Again, I'm racing the daylight. I hope it doesn't get too dark while I'm out here. I chose this spot, uh, as you'll maybe, if we get lucky, we'll hear it right before I set up. Two flocks of geese went over my head. And that's just, a, this is, um, Mount, did I say it's Mount Simon? This is Del, this is Del Pond, I guess, behind me. Um, and uh, I like to come here. It's not, it's about a five minute bike ride from St. James. And I come here a lot in the summer and just sit and uh, this time of year, the geese, hopefully we'll get some. Uh, and sometimes they fly so low over this spot, you can actually, it's the first time I ever heard the, the wind against the wings of the, of the geese. Just kind of took my breath away. You know, you always hear them honk, 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 which is lovely too, but uh, to hear, the, <laughs> to hear the, the, the winds beating, the wings beating back the wind, and keeping, keeping, keeping them aloft is really a, a beautiful sound. So I don't suppose we'll hear that, but uh anyway uh it's a gray november day it's the day before thanksgiving we'll have something to say about that toward the toward the end right um what do i want to say first so uh, just a little mention we got advent coming up so this this weekend we'll be wearing purple and we won't see green again until uh late january for our sunday masses the ordinary time but um a lot of people have been asking, are you gonna have a tree? Are you gonna have a big tree like you always have? And yes, thanks to the children of Glenn and Jan Mack, um, Dennis and, and Jeff and Joe, and, and I don't wanna leave out their sisters. I, I think of those three guys as doing a lot of the work and their, and their kids and, and friends. Um, they're gonna set, be on December 20th, they'll set it up, but uh, they really, really wanna do it, especially this year. Uh, we wanna keep some things that we look forward to intact you know and a lot of things have changed right with the virus precautions virus precautions continue to be oh i got an interactive map on the on the internet from georgia tech uh channel 19 news featured it and I, I looked it up it's really something you can you can highlight your county and then set the number of uh, if you go to an event in your county that has 50 people what are the chances you'd be exposed to the virus if you have a, if you go to an event in your county where there's 10 people and right now in Eau Claire, if you go to an event where there are 10 people, you know, it's kind of a random event, uh, you know, the chance that someone is gonna, has COVID in that group is 54%. It's a group of 10. You go to a group of 20 and it's um, 80%. So, um, and a lot of times people wouldn't know that they have it, right? So you can see why we take our, our precautions real seriously. So anyway, um, Advent, but so we have some reflection booklets that will be available. Jackie uh, ordered some of those. We have 125. Um, you can either come by the office and pick one up for yourself. You know, it's like a page a day for reflection. Or um, if that's hard for you and you'd like one, call and we'll get one over to you. If you live miles and miles away, we could send it. If you uh, live closer, I can bicycle over and give it to you. Or uh, Get, get someone to get you that booklet but uh, there's lots of ways we can um, observe Advent I think it's for so many people it's one of their favorite seasons I know it is for me um, for our book club right now and everybody's welcome to be part of that uh, I guess I just you'd have to let me know I think I put notice up on Facebook as an event get you a zoom invitation and uh, you wouldn't have to necessarily read the book we're reading. It's, it's not super long, but it, it's the letters and homilies of Father Alfred Delp. And he was imprisoned for uh, conspiring to resist uh, Hitler in World War II. And uh, he was eventually hanged uh, and died uh, just like three months before the surrender, or two, two months, I think. And um, so a lot of these reflections are while he's in prison and they're beautiful and he, and, he, and he loves Advent. He talks so much about Advent. So I just want to read a, a little passage. So you, it's kind of deep, but you're, you're deep people. You can handle it. Um, unfortunately, I wanted to get the book fast, so I got it on this e-reader instead of a... It'd be nice to have the book, but... Here's what he says, writing from a jail about three months before he was executed. So keep that in mind, the context of just the, the social unrest and the, and the evil in the society. And he says, uh, 
this is like two paragraphs. Advent is the time of the promise, not yet the fulfillment. We are still standing in the middle of the whole thing, in the logical restlessness and inevitability of destiny. To captive eyes, it still appears that the ultimate throw of the dice indeed will be cast here below in these valleys, on these battlefields, in these camps and prisons and cellars. One keeping vigil, though, senses the other powers at work and can await their hour. The sounds of devastation and destruction, the cries of self-importance and arrogance, the weeping of despair and powerlessness still fill the world. Yet standing silently, all along the horizon are the eternal realities with their age-old longing. The first gentle light of the glorious abundance to come is already shining above them. From out there, the first sounds are ringing out like shepherds' flutes and a boy's choir singing. They do not yet form a song or melody. It is all still too far off and only the first announcement and intimation. Still, it is happening. This is today. And tomorrow, the angels will relate loudly and jubilantly what has happened. And we will know, we will know it and will be blessed if we have believed and trusted in Advent. So if you're interested, you can always, I bet you can just look up on the internet without buying anything. Just Alfred Delp, D-E-L-P, his letters. You could read it and if you want to take part in our Zoom discussion. The first one is uh, December 9th. Uh, so Advent. Um, yeah. Oh, so so signups for Christmas Mass, you know, we, we're, we're shifting to this different software we're trying for Mass signups where you get to pick your seats and we're hoping it's more friendly to people. But with anything new, it causes some delays. And we we're, it's not ready to take signups for Christmas Masses yet. So a lot of people, when you heard that we were having signups, you're trying to sign up and we can't, won't be able to do that until at least a few days into December. So uh, please be patient with that, okay? And uh, we won't, you know, we won't shut you out if we, um, if they, if they kind of like fill, then we'll probably just try to add a mass, you know. So, but uh, never, never fear. Um, just to put in front of your eyes, I think I mentioned last week, the Diocese of La Crosse is really stepping up their uh, drive to raise funds with the capital campaign for the uh, restoration of the cathedral, which is, this is different from the annual appeal. So the annual appeal is a figure that we have to pay. The Cathedral Fund, it relies on your goodwill, and you'll hear more about it. I'm sure you'll get a mailing, um, but that's not a tax on us. That will be, a, that's an appeal. Um, so just hoping people can be as generous as they can. It is sort of the diocesan church. You know, I know up here in Eau Claire, we don't really see the cathedral much, so it seems like a, you know, a far away kind of thing, but um, you know, any support there would be helpful if you could. Um, so, Parish news, parish news. So our religious ed, this is the first Wednesday in a while. There's no religious ed, partly mainly because of Thanksgiving, but it won't meet in December either because of the uh, COVID situation and it'll be all virtual. Um, schools going well. They had a longer Thanksgiving break, but they'll be back um, with us uh, pretty soon. Immaculate Conception, feast day, in case uh, um, it'll be open to the public, nine o'clock in the morning for a mass. That's December 8th. It's a week and a half away yet, but, and then uh, two school masses following that, which will be just for the, the school children and, and their parents. So, uh, let's see. Um, the survey, thanks everybody that filled out the survey. We had well over 200 people that took the time to do that and offer their comments. Um, the main two themes that I grabbed was a real, uh, uh, af uh, uh, affirming a lot of compliments about the online ministry, particularly the online mass. And um, so many thanks to the unseen uh, filmers, mainly uh, Don Byrne, Landon Cerny, and they're getting some uh, helpers along the way too. And um, you know, we hope to get a core of people that can operate that so we don't just lean on those two men uh, too heavily. Um, but they've been just so, so good. 
uh, to us and it's well appreciated by all of you so that's awesome and uh, in these cheese chats too it seems like they're uh, important to some folks so we'll keep doing that right um, you know, on the negative side we did you know we had a lot of fair amount of comments people like you know I haven't really gotten I heard that people getting phone calls from staff or from the priest and uh, you know we really haven't or we did once in April and we haven't heard from anybody since and um, now um, I don't know what to say about that I'm glad we got that feedback so it led to a lot of discussion on our staff about trying to step that up it'd be nice if uh, to know you know because we you know I just opened the book and there's like a thousand names and I'm thinking oh where do we where do we start you know It'd be kind of nice to know if you know anybody. You think, you know, I got this neighbor, I know this person, and I, I think uh, I think they could really use a call. And occasionally that happens, um, and that's great. Uh, it's like uh, uh, it's just it's just it, it's a little more helpful because I th I think when we call, well, it, it's just more helpful to help help us uh, uh, target our, our calls more precisely, I guess, to, to where they're most needed. Um, but, uh, but that's important, and we don't want people to feel uncared for, right? So, um, so there's, those are the kind of things I pulled out of the survey. There's a lot of other things, you know. Um, some people said, I'd like to help, but I don't know how to help. Help me, help me know how to help. We've been pushing the usher and greeter things, but that's maybe only if you're comfortable coming out, you know. Maybe you don't, because of the virus, you want to be home. Are there other ways you can help? Well, you could certainly join the call tree. Oh, I should say about reaching out and calling. I think I neglected to mention last time what a, a fantastic job our women's group, our Parish Council of Catholic Women, PCCW, is doing. They, they uh, are a real service-oriented group. I heard a goose over there, but um, service-oriented group, and uh, they've been making a lot of calls to a lot of people, and I think they're trying to expand. I think they're first calling members of their group over 80, and then they kind of let's call more people, let's call more people, and I, you know, if, and if you get a call from them, I hope you'll just. Uh, you know, receive it in the spirit it's given out of love and concern and, um, you know, wanting St. James Parish to bleed, to, to put flesh on our, what we say, that we want to care for people and we do care for our people. Um, so, but, but anyway, if, if, even if you're a man and you want to join that effort, just to coordinate, let us know and, and we can kind of, you'll be an honorary woman. Just kidding. I mean, you'll be, but you join the forces of the, uh, Parish Council of Catholic Women. Just you'll be one of their callers, and that would be that would be fine. I don't think there's any, you know, gender discrimination for this act of love that they're trying to put out there. So, all are welcome to do that. Uh, help in need. So we've had people donate and say, you know, I want to give some money for Christmas, and that's great, and it's always welcome. Um, actually, what we need more now is ideas of whom we can help. You know, so again, it's kind of like, who should we call? Uh, do you know people that could really benefit from some gift cards uh, from Target or gift cards from, you know, that we have to give away? Um, you know, we can guess, we can do our best guesses and send some out. And, um, but it helps, it helps to know. So if you, if you, I just invite people, to, if you, uh, Christine is kind of coordinating all this. Anne is always very interested in helping whoever she can. Yeah, all of us, any of us, but I think those two are kind of courting most of it. Probably more Christine, um, so you can call her. Uh, Anne's got her nest full of eggs right now. She's got a lot, a lot going on. The, the diocese is sort of changing their accounting procedures, and it just—it's hard. It's difficult. I think God, I don't have that job, and I, and I feel sorry for Anne that she does. And yet I know how much she loves to be of service to us. So. Um, Say a, say a prayer for her as she tries to convert our books. Um, let's see. We, oh, we did get some uh, fair amount of feedback about ch that can we do some more child friendly online? So, um, you know, Sunday Mass is kind of Sunday Mass. You know, we are going to have a children's Christmas Mass. So I'm not sure how to make the Sunday Mass more child friendly. We'll keep kind of thinking about it. Um, there were some ideas. Um, even on this chat, I didn't think of it. I can't put it into action right now, but that I could, in the beginning of the chat, ask the children a question or something, and maybe you could get me some answers. And then the next week's chat, I could say, well, here's some of the answers we got from our, our children. Um, yeah. Let me see if I think of one before 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 too long. Um, well, maybe I, I can just ask them, you know, what was the best thing about Thanksgiving? Because you'll have Thanksgiving tomorrow. And, um, 
Or just a little bit about your experience as a as a as a child. You know, uh, what was Thanksgiving like for you this this year? And uh, maybe I, if you give me those, email me those responses. You can uh, I can maybe read them out next time. Um, yeah, but oh, but but pay attention. You know, Kelly's email, Kelly uh, Boudry's uh, weekly or biweekly email with all those activities. It's a lot of ch a lot of child friendly stuff there. A lot of crafts you can do with children. A lot of uh, family activities, lots of good stuff. So um, while we're trying to be creative and offer more things, we do we are offering a lot of things in that regard. So just maybe not the Sunday Mass. Apparently Sunday Mass, I think it's hard enough for kids to sit in church for an hour, you know? I remember being a kid, playing with the kneelers and all that stuff when I was a little kid, <laughs> hoping they'd do Eucharistic prayer too, because it was the shortest, you know? I've been there. So, uh, <laughs> Anyway, it's hard enough in church. So when they're at home, when your the kids are home and they have their games and stuff, it's hard just to sit there for an hour and watch and, and watch and celebrate mass through the. And, and I understand that. I don't know. I don't know quite how to, to solve that that problem. But um, people have ideas. Let me know. Um, <laughs> uh, Christmas. Oh, I can't read my own writing. Nuts, huh? That's okay. If you forget something, you always can just do the spiritual thing and say, well, if God needs me to remember, I'll remember. It's a little bit uh, defeatist, maybe. but um, Hey, Dan Sullivan turned 30 this week. He was our coordinator for our community table volunteers for a while. He and his wife, me, are some of our awesome younger parishioners that we uh, love to see out there. Um, on uh, Saturn News, so Dick Crisp died this week. Dick Crisp is Sue Crisp's um, husband, and uh, and he was growing weak over the years. And Sue uh, definitely gave a beautiful witness of uh, spousal love and, and care for him these last months. And uh, we will have a memorial service for him uh, in two days on Friday. Um, so he wasn't he wasn't Catholic himself, but you know Sue is a, one of our super active parishioners for decades and uh, you know he was right behind her and supporting her and all that so that that means a lot um i just ran into uh, becky at the post office and she said her husband's mom had, had a stroke in lady smith charlotte so if you want to say a prayer for charlotte and lady smith and her recovery um, and, and if you want to get on our, our prayer tree list uh, Christine, whenever we get a, a prayer request, Christine sends out a, you know, pray for, you know, pray for Charlotte, who, you know, a mother of a parishioner who's just had a stroke. And you'll get that. You can join our prayer force for that. Um, okay, I want to make sure help a need. So street, street ministry, I mentioned about gift cards. We just gave a chunk of change to the street, uh, Chippewa Valley Street Ministry. It's, you know, right now in uh, Sojourner House, uh, homeless shelter, there's a lot of restrictions and some people have, you know, virus. And so it's, a lot of uh, a lot more people on the street who aren't having shelter and they came and met with christine yesterday and said you know we really need some money and, and uh, thanks to you donations over the months and weeks uh, we have money to give and so we're going to give them a pretty good chunk of change and uh, and you know direct service to the most vulnerable in our city right now so i hope you feel good about that i i uh i think it's important um I don't know, maybe that's all the kind of parish news. I just want to mention about, uh, boy, we just didn't get more geese. Isn't that something? We just missed them by 30 seconds when they flew over when I was setting up. But, um, so Thanksgiving, I don't know. I just, my, the one story that I have from my life about Thanksgiving, uh, I hit close to 20 minutes, but I'll just, I'll just tell this. So um, when I was a, a freshman in college, Okay, so we were we were studying philosophy, okay, and nothing too, you know, brainy, but it made me doubt my faith a little bit, but in a good way. I mean, I think it's good to learn and question, and you know, I was fortunate to have support, and but there is sort of a um, there's this one you know way of thinking that you know there's really no free will, everything has a cause. You know, I'm lifting my right arm, left arm now because something caused me to then something caused that and on my way back so really you don't really have any freedom and god doesn't really fit very well in that whole that whole scheme i thought boy you know 18 year old you know i'm thinking man you know i just 
gone to church with my family all my life and all these things. And uh, so I was first just thinking about these questions, you know, is there a God? And, um, at the same time, I was taking this other class uh, and we were studying Newman, you know, the Newman Parish in town is named after uh, Cardinal Newman. Now, now he's a saint. I think he was canonized. Yeah, he's canonized. Just recently canonized. And, uh, oh, without getting too far into it, he, he, he argued for God that um, because we have a sense of right and wrong, our conscience, that, you know, we should, we should do something and uh, other things we should not do. And we have this sort of internal, you know, he said that kind of implies that there's a, a, a judge uh, above us or over us that gives us this sense of, you know, be, before whom am I guilty? Before whom am I innocent? Be, who should give me a pat on the back? You know, is it, is it just my conscience, you know? Uh, and you wonder if that's validates how well our consciences are formed, but you see a lot of people that don't seem to give a rip about being pretty nasty. But anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting and I was taking that in and it didn't speak to me too much. But anyway, one day, so one day I went out and, uh, my dad's my dad smoked cigars, and so I, I don't know. I thought my brothers did when we went fishing and stuff. So I'm not, you know, I'm not, not encouraging that, but it, maybe that had something to do with it. But I, I had this thing. I, I think it was kind of on a lonely night or something. I'd go out, and I would. Uh, I didn't like litter, so I'd go out with a little paper uh, garbage bag, and I'd pick up litter around the, the lake that was on campus, and uh, beautiful campus. And uh, it was a night in, in early spring, and the ice was just coming off the lake. And it was kind of a misty, a misty sort of night. There's a little, you know, that fog or mist that hangs to a lake when the ice is melting. It was like that. And it was dark and there were lamps lit along the trail, the lakeside trail. And uh, I had this, <laughs> I had like a cigar, you know, and I had a, you know, a few puffs of that. And I, you know, I felt pretty good. I've always, you know, it was a hard thing stopping tobacco because I love the, I really liked the effect that it had. Um, you know, it made me feel good basically, so it's, that's where I draw. Anyway, anyway, I, maybe, maybe too much information, but I have struggled with that um, in my past. Uh, thank God, right, not right now. But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, I was feeling good with that, and, and I was leaning up against this big old oak tree, just kind of looking out at the lake, kind of like this one, and uh, and the mist coming, and then and then the, the church bells start ringing. It was like six o'clock bells, ding 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 ding. And I just kind of get the kind of the tingles or the kind of not the chills in a negative way, but you know, just really like there's no place, no place I'd rather be. I'm just completely content. And and then, you know, just to make my senses explode, there's this flock of ducks that that just comes in and sort of, you know, they just kind of gradually kind of just land of the water like that, you know. And it was just it was just like great it was like too too good of an experience and i just thought what is this i i, I felt i don't know if i ever felt better in my life I ever had a better moment and uh i thought what is this what is this feeling you know and and even though it's probably not a feeling i gave a concept to it i it was gratitude it was gratitude i was so thankful to be experiencing what i was experiencing right then and so I'm just kind of taking it in. I'm not thinking too hard. I just think, wow, this is, this is what it is to be grateful. I'm here now and it's good. And I didn't, I didn't make this moment happen. It's, it's given to me, you know? And uh, so then I, and then I connected it to that, that Cardinal Newman thing. And I basically said, okay, if I'm, feeling, if I'm overwhelmed with gratitude right now, that implies that I should thank someone. And like I said, I can't thank myself. I didn't, I didn't create that moment. You know, I could thank the groundskeepers. I could thank, you know. But it just was so obvious to me that moment to thank God. And ever since then, I would say I, I've never seriously doubted the existence of God. Some things still trouble me in life, and I have a lot of questions about faith and things like that. But uh, that sense of felt relationship to God, someone I can thank for the goodness of the present moment that's given to me. Someone who walks with me even when things are difficult. So that that's that's kind of that's my chief Thanksgiving story from my life. That was a long time ago now. I've certainly some others since then, but um, 
you know, and as I get older, I don't know how you feel about this, but I was, I was reading this, uh, I forget who the author was, but you know, you really have gotten to kind of a mysticism of gratitude. Well, well, this one guy, David Steindl-Rast, he wrote this book called uh, Gratitude. He's sort of the guru of gratitude. And um, he said that uh, uh, a lot of people think that we'll be thankful after we have joy. And maybe my story was like that. I had all this joy and gratitude, so then I was grateful. But he said, really, the deeper truth is that when we're grateful, then we'll be joyful. So to try to cultivate gratitude. And it was probably him or someone else in this anthology I was reading, but it's like, a, um, to be able to get to the point where you thank God for everything, even the hard times, because all of that has contributed to you being here now. You know, and that, that gets kind of um, mind mending. Like there's some really awful things that happen and to say that I thank God for that doesn't always feel right like you know a car accident in my family or my sister died I don't know that I want to thank God for that exactly but there, there is this thing that the mystics hold out to us that all of life everything that happens uh, has contributed to now and now is good so there should be a kind of underlying sense of gratitude for it having enriched enriched your life and that can seem selfish too, like my life's enriched but someone else was in pain. But that somehow that their, their lives are taken care of too by this God. Uh, so it's not like radically self-centered like that either. Pretty mysterious stuff, but the, the mysticism of gratitude, you know. Um, and Meister Eckhart, last thought on gratitude. Meister Eckhart has one sentence. He's a German Rhineland mystic from maybe 800 years ago. He said, if the only prayer you ever say in life is thank you, that'll be enough. If the only prayer you ever say in life is thank you, that'll be enough. Well, I think we're too late for the geese. If I was just here a half hour earlier, we would have heard a lot of squawking, I think. So here's a little happy song. It's probably kind of late. You can always just tune out. I don't know this will be that pleasant to listen to, but it's a little more upbeat than some of the Taze chants. Give thanks to the Lord who does wondrous deeds, who masters the winds and the raging seas, whose love is forever, whose love is forever, whose love is forever more. Give thanks to the God who has blessed our land, who guards every step with a mighty hand whose love is forever whose love is forever whose love is forever more oh bless the lord for every gift that comes to grace our way and praise the god of faithfulness who comes to light our day give thanks to the god who has set us free, who raised us to life on a blessed tree, whose love is forever, whose love is forever, whose love is forever more. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless you.